everyone, in this video tutorial for mathematics, we're going to look at changing the subject of the formula, also known as transposition. And before we get started, Ruby have been dealing with formulas, and since primary school, there's a formula for everything. There's a formula to find simple interest, a formula for profit, a formula for loss, a formula for area, parameter, and so forth. But at this level, we need to know what is a formula. A formula is a general equation showing the connection between two or more related quantities. If it was in on my earlier lesson when we did equations, we talk about a formula could be one having an equal sign, it's always equal to something. So we can say P is equal to rate by time all over simple interest by 100. This is just a general formula, okay? And in this formula, we call P the subject, okay? So P is the subject, and basically P is equal to this, the other letter. However, when we look at transposing now, we're basically trying to get one of these letters, whether it be R, T, or simple interest, or SI, to be the subject in order to put um, the principal now as part of that equation. Okay, so when we talk about making the subject of the formula, we have to rearrange the entire formula to make one particular letter the subject. And... This is done very easy, and your rules of equation will apply. A positive will go across as a negative. A negative will become a positive. Multiply will become divide. Divide will become multiply. Okay? And basically, there are seven um, cases to deal with in terms of transposing formulas. And... The seven cases starts from obviously the easy ones and move forward to the harder ones. So we will start by looking at the first transposition case or make any subject of the formula case. So I'll just head them up case one. This video is going to be a long tutorial so I would encourage you to pause it and understand the different cases before you move on to the harder ones. So before you move on to case 2, ensure that you understand case 1 and again throughout the video, make your notes. Pause and make your notes. We have case 1, which is basically symbols connected by a plus sign. And what we don't know about a what we know about a plus sign, the plus sign looks like this, right? Plus. So we have the example um, where we looked at where we look at this. V is equal U plus T. Right? And the rule here is very simple. When a symbol is added to one side of the formula, it can be transferred to the other side 
mean and the other side of the equal side equal sign it can be transferred to the other side of the formula by subtracting and we will see what this means when a symbol is added to one side of the formula it can be transferred to the to the other side okay i'm going to ask you to the other side of the formula by subtracted so i'll repeat that when a symbol is added to one side of the formula it can be transferred to the other side of the formula by subtracted and we say the other side because it moves from one side of the equal sign to the next side so have a look at this example here now v is equal to u plus t and we want to make u the subject so we want to make for u okay so we want to make u the subject of the formula the goal is to get all the letters away from u as far as possible meaning make them make u on one side and the other letters on one side and this is a simple um move we can say to get u by itself we can move positive t across so now we'll have v minus t is equal to u and then we could rearrange the formula now to put u first so you can say u is equal v minus t okay so just like the equation a positive go across but the goal is to get what they're asking for to be the subject by itself and everything away from it so this was addition now we can look at an example so i'll just get an example from the exercises and i have this is example one so you can pause and take it on and again v is equal u plus t and we wanted to find put u as the subject of the formula so we take the plus t away from the u and carry it across by the v so positive t will go across and become negative t so v minus t is equal to u u is equal to v minus t so that is one example we're going to do our next example now and the next example is similar it's dealing with addition of course right so example two we want to transpose transpose a is equal to p plus i and we want to make p the subject of the formula for p this is easy we want to get everything away from p and put p by itself so let's leave p by by himself and move i because we don't want nothing next to p so in doing so we'll write back our formula a is equal to p plus i and in doing so we need to move this i away from p to leave p by itself so you'll circle the i and put it across by a so positive i will become negative i so it will be a minus i is equal to p therefore p is equal to a minus i so this is simple so this was case one so again pause the video and take the relevant notes now we're moving on to case two and case 2 is very similar to case 1 except we're dealing with subtraction. Okay? So we're dealing with symbols connected by a minus sign. So case 2, symbols connected by a minus sign. And we'll take our example. We have the example here now. We have the example one. <clears throat> and this is equal to um the I said example one is transpose V is equal to U minus T 
for you. Okay, making you the subject of the formula. And the rule, basic rule of equations and formulas, when a symbol, meaning a letter or a number, is subtracted, from one side of a formula it can be transferred to the other side by adding. Okay, so we add it. So when a symbol is subtracted from one side of a formula, it can be transferred to the other side by subtracting. So we have the example one here. V is equal to U minus T and we want to make U the subject. So for U, okay? So we'll write it again. V is equal to U minus T. We want to leave U by itself because we want to make U the subject. So what we have to do is move this minus t across and it will become positive. Now just like equation, when you move a sign, you also, when you move a letter or number, you also move any sign in front of it. So never forget that. Always move signs. Always move the sign in front of the letter. Or number. Okay? So we have V is equal to U minus T and we want to make U the subject. So we have to take this minus T away from U as far as possible. So the minus T will go across and become positive. So V plus T is equal to U. Therefore, U is equal to V plus T. Okay? And this is making U the subject of this formula. So this was case 2, dealing with a minus sign. And I just want to do one more example to make sure we understand. And we will look at example 2. So again, pause the video and take a note. Example 2 now. Looked at... Example 2 looks at... A minus sign as well. So we want to make to transpose we want to transpose P is equal to H capital H plus common H and we want to make capital H the subject of the formula. P is equal to capital H take away common H and we want to make H the subject of the formula. <coughs> so I'm just going to rewrite this formula. P is equal to capital H minus H and we want to transpose for H, right? So that means we have to get everything as far away as possible from capital H. And we will do so by circling minus H and moving it across to become positive. So P plus common H is equal to capital H. Therefore, capital H is equal to P plus H. Okay? And that was case 2. Now we move on to case 3. And it's just 7 case, so we're moving ahead. Case 3 now, talk about products, which is multiplication. So case 3, let me write it. Case 3, Case 3 symbols connected as a product. And when we talk about products of numbers, we mean that two numbers are multiplied to each other. And this you should learn from primary school, right? So when there's a general rule, when a symbol 
is connected to one side of a formula as a product it can be transferred to the other side of the formula by dividing it. Okay, so when a symbol is connected to one side of a formula as a product, it can be transferred to the other side of the formula by dividing it. So we look at it an example. So example one in this case, keep putting equal sign. Okay, example one, they said to transpose V is equal to RW and we want to find or make R the subject of the formula. RW, two letters stick up together. Remember when we did equations and when we talk about algebra from the beginning stages of algebra, two letters that are stuck together like this or together means they are multiplied by each other. So R is multiplied by W, hence you get RW. Always remember that. So two letters connected to each other without just, with just a, with no space, no, um, no symbol or anything is a multiplication. So RW together is basically meaning R multiplied by W. And we want to find for R. So basically if you put this formula V is equal to RW, we need to get R away from everything else and make it by itself. So if R, W means R multiplied by W, if we take this, multiply by W and move it across, it will become divided by W. So basically, V divided by W is equal to R, therefore, R is equal to V divided by W. Some of you may write it like this as well, nothing wrong with that, okay? At this level, we deal with a fraction. Hence, we make R the subject of the formula. So again, we will look at the next example. And hopefully, you pause the video. I, I, I mean, I expect you guys to do this because this, remember, we don't have physical school anymore. So I can't see who's writing and not writing their notes, of course. But remember, if you don't try to work, it is not. My price to pay is yours, right? Because some of you have exams next year and depending on these lessons. So we'll look at example two. <clears throat> An example two states transpose P is equal to H capital P G for G. Okay, so we want to make G the formula. And look at this. We have a common P and we have a capital P. So, this is simple. If you look at H P G, this means H multiplied by capital P multiplied by common G. So again, we want to put G by itself. So we have to move HP away from G. Okay, so P is equal to H capital P G. We need to move this across here and this will be divide because all these letters here multiply to each other. So it will be P over H capital P. So make it small P a little small so we can know. P is equal to common H capital P is equal to G. So therefore G is equal to P common P divided by common H capital P. Right? So P divided by HP is equal to G or G 
as the subject of the formula is equal to P divided by H capital P, as we see here, right? So this is the next thing with transposing formulas. They will have capital and common letters. Not because we see capital P and common P, they are the same thing. They are treated differently, okay? So please always remember that. So now we touch on case 3, which is connected by a product. We're going to look at case 4. And case 4, talk about <coughs> symbols connected by a quotient. And we know quotient means divide, right? So case 4, symbols connected by a quotient and we know this means divide so we have our first example but before we put our example let me write the rule so the rule is when a symbol is connected to one side of the formula it can't be transferred to the other side by multiplying. So just as we did before, when we multiply, we divide, when we switch over, now when we divide, we need to multiply. And we'll look at example 1 under this case. So example 1, we have transpose I is equal to V over R and we want to make V the subject of the formula. So basically we need to remove I as the subject and put V. So by doing so we have to move everything as further, furthest away or farther away from V as possible. So we write to map that now. So I is equal to V over R and we want to make V the subject. So that means we have to remove the divide R, which is, which is the vinculum R, which is the fraction form, and we need to put it across here. So I multiplied by R is equal to V, therefore V is equal to IR, okay? So V is equal to IR. IR also means I multiplied by R. So I, I just to break it down the simplest form, we need to remove these things. Um, the multiplication sign. So again, I'll repeat, I is equal to V over R and we want to make V the subject. In order to make V the subject, we need to move it from by R and by this, we need to also move the vinculum, which means divide. So we're taking that divided by R or over R and we're putting it by I and a division will go across as the rule says to be multiplication. So I multiplied by R is equal to V, therefore V is equal to I R. Okay, so this was example one. We're going to look at the next example. We have example two. <clears throat> and this is a kind of technical one, right? We have F is equal to V over 2 pi R. And we need to find for V. It's not technical. We just see the pi sign and, you know, we get a little scared. But it don't have to be so. Right? We just need to transpose the formula to make the V the subject. And the rule is, try to move, if it's a big formula, um, piece by piece. Right? So you will move, um, the in this case, you're moving the 2 pi radius across. Because this is dealing with radius. So... 2 pi r, if in this case let's not confuse it, to get v by himself, right? So v, f is equal to v over 2 pi r. 
In order to get V by himself, we need to get this away. And this means V divided by 2 pi R. So this moving across would be F multiplied by 2 pi R is equal to V. Therefore, V is equal to 2 pi R X. Okay? So now we make B the subject of the formula. So 2 pi R move across from division from V divided by and move across. So it will be F multiplied by. And because this has a symbol in it, we will put the letter behind it. Okay? But I mean, sometimes they don't get the question wrong if this is forward. It means the same thing. This these still multiplied by each other. So good. So this was example 2 of case 4 and it deals with division. Now we look at case 5. And case 5, it, it gets a little trickier, but we almost finished. Case 5 talks about formulae requiring the removal of roots, meaning square root or cube root, right? So formulae requiring the removal of roots. And when we talk about roots, we're talking about cube and square. Okay? So there's a rule to follow. And the rule for this one says that when changing the subject of a formula requiring the removal of brackets Sorry, the removal of square roots it should be noted that squaring a square root sign removes a square sign. Okay? So if I have <coughs> squaring or cubing a root sign will remove it, right? So if I have is equal to x, I have in order to get rid of this square root sign to get x as the subject we need to square in order to get ok let me rewrite that right? so I have square root of x is equal to x and a half in order to get rid of this square root I have to square both sides so both sides will be square ok and by this this now the fact that I'm um, square root and a uh, square root sign, um, cube and a square root sign, I'm squaring a square root sign, I'm removing this, so it cancel out all this, right? So the square number will remove the square root. So we will end up with x is equal to x and a half squared. And dealing with powers, we look at this, so a half multiplied by 2 will be equal to 1. So x, so basically, is equal to x, okay? So let's look at an example. So we have example 1. We have make t the subject. 
of the formula V is equal to the square root of T over M. Let me write that over that looking like a nine. T over M. Okay? And we want to make T the subject, capital T. So easy, easy, right? The first thing we will do is write it over. F is equal to the square root of T over M. And in order to get rid of this square root first, we need to square both sides. So we will put square here and square here. This square root, this square number here will take off the square root sign. So we now end up with B squared is equal to T over M. Now we can use case 3, case 4, sorry, which deal with quotient. And we just remove the bottom part here now, which is divided by M or over M across here. And we'll end up with B squared multiplied by M is equal to T. Therefore, T is equal to M V squared. Okay? So let's repeat that. We have made T the subject of the formula where V is equal to the square root of T over M. This is our fraction. So therefore, in order to do so, we have to square both sides. In doing so, we just put brackets and multiply by a square root of 2. Square root, right? By this, the square root of 2 will eliminate the square root. The square number will eliminate the square root. And we'll end up with a square number on your left hand side. But that's okay. We're not doing anything with this. We need to get T. So by doing this now, we're moving across. The M, which is divided by M here, so it will go across and become multiplied. So V squared multiplied by M is equal to T. Therefore, T is equal to M V squared. Okay, so this was example 1. I'm going to look at example 2 now. And hopefully it catch on from this one. Real simple. Anytime you see a square root, just square both numbers. And the square sign, the square number will take away the square root. And obviously one side will end up with a square number. But that's okay. We have example 2. Make G the subject of the formula. T is equal to 2 pi square root of L over G. Again, very easy. We just It just looks difficult, right? So, we want to make this little G here the subject. So, we need to get everything away from this G as possible. So, we will start firstly by moving this, the 2 pi. And 2 pi means multiply 2 pi square root of LG, everything is basically multiplied. 2 multiplied by pi, multiplied by the square root of L over G. So this will go across now and become divided. So T divided by 2 pi is equal to the square root of LG. Now we want to get L, um, G out of here. So we need now to cube both, um, to not cube, to square both sides. So by squaring both sides, we multiply by the power of 2. And this will cancel out this bracket here. So now we'll end up with T over 2 pi squared is equal to LG. Okay? And in doing so now, we can just square everything inside the bracket, okay? So, we'll end up with, moving across up here now. This G here is divided, so this will be multiplied. So, we're going to end up with, so going up here now, we'll end up with T over 2 pi squared L is equal to G. Therefore, G is equal to T over 2 pi squared.
squared L. The reason why we just lash L onto that is because L divided by G is L over G and division go across and multiplication and we don't need to put a multiplication sign at this point because we understand that two letters together forms a multiplication, okay? So we have T over 2 pi squared multiplied by L. So G is equal to T over 2 pi squared multiplied by L. Good. So this was the second example. Now I want to look at one, a third example on the case 5 with a cube root. So I'll take off everything from the board for space purposes, right? So we have example 3. And example 3 says, make V, the subject of the formula and of the formula R is equal to the cube root of 3V over 4 pi. So we want to make V the subject of the formula. We want to make V the subject of the formula. So in doing so, we need to remove everything out away as far as possible from V. So the first thing we'll do, and we can do it this method, is cube both sides to remove this cube root sign. So R cube is equal to 3 cube root of 3V over 4 pi. And again, cube this. Okay, so we end up with this. So this will eliminate this. So R cube is equal to the two, 3 V over 4 pi. And now we have a clearer vision of where V is in order to make it a subject. So we know now this bottom part here now, 3 V divided by 4 pi. So we can move across this and carry it across. Division becomes multiplied. So R3 4 pi is equal to 3v. And we could rewrite this there. We could say 4 pi R squared is equal to 3v. And now we can move across this 3 from my v and 3 V means 3 multiplied by V. So this will go across here now to become divide. So I'll use this. So R cube 4 pi, we could rewrite that to 4 pi R cube. And it will be divided by 3 to give us V. Therefore, V is equal to 4 pi R cube all over 3. The reason why I rewrite it is because I don't, like the idea of having a letter, a number, and a letter. I want to group my letters together. So I put the R next to the pi, the R squared that is. That's how we end up with 4 pi R squared. And the same thing that we did before where we square to remove a square root. In this case, we cube to remove a cube root. Okay, it's just a simple formula to follow. Simple, simple root. Okay, and I mean, some of you might not get it at first, but keep pausing the video and going back over and reviewing it and practicing as much questions as you can. There was this year I gave 254 questions for this particular topic just until the children get, um, until the children get the hang of it, okay? So this was case 5. Now, K6 involves the removal of powers. So, I'm just going to erase the board. So, K6 deals with the removal of powers. Formally requiring the removal of powers.
the formulae requiring the removal of powers. Right. So we have powers. You know, when we have a half squared so forth, we have powers. So this is easy to figure out once we know the rule and I'll write the rule. So the rule for this states when changing the subject of the formula requiring the removal of a power and you know the power is the digits like this 2 to the power 2 4 to the power 6 this little number on top is called powers right so when changing the subject of the formula requiring the removal of its power it should be noted that taking the square root of a square it should be noted It should be noted, it should be noted that taking the square root by, it should be noted that taking the square root of a square by taking the square root of a square removes the square, right? So we remember that from the previous we remember that from the previous case. So rule when changing the subject of the formula requiring the removal of a power, it should be noted that taking the square root of a square removes the square. Similarly, when changing the subject of the formula to remove a cube, similarly, when we're changing the subject of the formula to remove a cube, it should be noted that the cube root removes cube, right? So same with cube. Cube root removes cube. So that's something that we always need to remember. And this will make it easy for us now when we look at this topic. So we have the formula now, which is the reverse. Just now we remove square root with cube and cube and square square root with square numbers and cube root with cube root with with cube numbers. So now we're doing the opposite. We have example one under this topic. Example one. And we have v is equal to pi r squared. So now we don't have a square root or a cube root sign, but we have powers to deal with. And we're saying in order to remove the powers of 2 and 3, we need to use the square root now and the cube root. So v is equal to pi r squared. And we want to make pi r squared h and we want to make r the subject of the formula so this is easy to do the first thing we're going to do is write back the formula b is equal to pi r squared h we want everything to move away from r so the first thing i will do is move the letter last which is h so this means v this means pi r squared multiplied by h right Pi multiplied by r squared multiplied by h. So v now divided by h is equal to pi r squared. Now we need to move across the pi now because we need to get rid of this from by the um, from by the v. Sorry, by the r. So we end up with v over pi h is equal to r squared. And here we come, this 
part where we need to remove this but how are we going to do this it's easy where we we square root this and we square root here and this will cancel out this so we'll end up with the square root of v over pi h is equal to r therefore r is equal to the square root of v over pi h and this is the opposite what we've been doing just now when we had the square root and cube root symbols we square and cube them and it removed the roots so in this case now if we have a power of 2 or 3 the square root will remove the 2 and the cube root will remove the 3 so this was the example 1 now we're going to look at example 2 which is which is a square again, but is a, is a harder one now. Right, so I hope that you took down the note. So example two now is a bit bigger. Example two says P is equal to MG plus MV squared over R. Okay. So we want to make now we want to make R the subject of the formula. So we have P is equal to mg plus mv squared over R. First thing we do is get rid of the things furthest away from R that is close to R on the other side, right? So we end up with moving across now mg. And mg is plus, so it will be p minus mg is equal to mv squared over r. Now we have this situation here with the r. Okay, we want r to be the subject. We want r to be the subject. Actually, no, we want v to be the subject, right? Sorry, my mistake. Kind of getting confused because I have some background noise to deal with. So we have, we want to make V the subject of the formula instead of R. That was my mistake, I'm sorry. So P is equal to MG plus MV squared over R and we want to make V the subject. So MG is positive MG and I'll go across as V negative. So P minus MG is equal to MV squared divided by R. So now we want to take R away. And R is divided by, so this will be P minus MG multiplied by R. And we're using brackets for this because brackets represents um, multiplication when we talk about the equation. is equal to MV squared. But before we get to into anything further, I want to expand this bracket. And remember when we expand brackets, we multiply everything that is on the outside by what is on the inside okay so r multiplied by p will give me rp well put first letter first so we'll give pr and then we'll have mgr is equal to mv squared and to get rid of this square we have now we have to square root pr minus mgr and then we have to square root mv squared so mv squared will take out this um, the square root will take all this square from mv squared, so we'll end up with mv, and we'll end up now with square root of pr minus mgr is equal to mv. Okay, so let's rewrite it now. pr minus mgr is equal to mv. Now we have mv, which means m multiplied by v. And this can, M can easily, easily be moved by dividing whatever this is by M and we end up with V. Therefore, and um, take me up here now, the square root of P, therefore, V is equal to the square root of PR minus MGR divided by M. So we'll just go over that one more time. They give us this formula, P is equal to MG plus MV squared over R and we want to make V the subject. In doing so now, we have to get everything away from V as possible. 
So if we start removing positive mg, what will go across as negative mg? So P minus mg is equal to mv squared divided by r. mv squared divided by r, when it go across, will become multiplied. So hence we multiply using brackets here. So r, open brackets, P minus mg, close brackets. This means P minus mg multiplied by r. And when we expand the bracket, we're going to end up with P multiplied by R, which is PR, and R multiplied by MG, which is MGR, is equal to MV squared. So in order to get rid of the square root, we must square root both sides. In order to get rid of the square number, we need to square root both sides. So square root of PR minus MGR is equal to the square root of MV squared, and the square will take away the square root. So we'll end up now with P, P, the square root of PR minus mgr is equal to mv and now we can just move m away from v by dividing and we'll end up with v alone so we'll end up with v is equal to the square root of pr minus mgr divided by m okay so this was the second example and it will be similar if we had a cube root let's say we had a cube root when we at this point it will just be a cube added here and the cube will take away this cube root Okay, so it's similar. So this is just a reversal of what we've been doing, except they did not give us a cube root or a square root. We had to put it in in order to get rid of the square and cube numbers. So this was case 6, so I hope you pause and make your notes. I'm going to erase now and we'll look at the final case, which is case 7. Case 7, it gets a little harder, but it gets easier as we work. And if possible, we could probably do another session on this, so we can understand it better. And we're going to look at case 7, which is a formula that requires factorization. And this is where it gets hard, because I know some of you don't remember how to factorize. So case 7, formula... Requiring factorization. Okay? So we have, for example, example one. Make our the subject of the formula V is equal to 3R over R minus R. And we have a lot of capital R's in one formula, but it's easy, we just need to factorize it, right? So given this situation here, V is equal to 3R over R, capital R minus common R. It's easy to work out now. So we need to cross multiply, cross multiplying R minus R we get. So basically we want to make capital R the subject, but we could choose, right? Let's, I will choose this one because I, it's easier to move everything away from it. So I'm going to take this, which divided by R minus, capital R minus common R is basically divided onto 3R. So now we can say, V multiplied by R minus R is equal to 3R. And then we could expand bracket. We're going to get V capital R by V multiplied by R. And V common R, which is V multiplied by common R, is equal to 3R. Okay? And grouping the terms in the right, grouping the terms are on the left hand side and transferring the older terms. So what I want to do is take this little, this V with common R across and I want to bring this here. So we'll end up with V R minus 3 R is equal to V common R. And when we get this now, we could factorize. And when we factorize, we take out the common factor in this. So the common factor is R and we'll end up with V minus 3. Okay? And we get V R. Now, 
we have this we can remove this entire thing here and put it across here to get r by itself so let's do that up here so r is equal to v r divided by v minus 3 and there we have it so the only difference is we did some factorizing okay we started by moving r capital r minus common r across by b and because it's divided or we multiply, we expanded our bracket, we get V capital R minus V common R is equal to 3R. V capital R minus 3 capital R is equal to V common R. And we get this because we wanted to group. When we reach here, we wanted to group like twos, right? Group like two. So we have a capital R here and a capital R here. So it's only wise that we group them together in order to further factorize. So we group them here. So now we can pull out a common factor here, which is R, and put it outside. And everything else, you know, when we factorize, we put it in brackets. So R is equal, so R open brackets, V minus 3 is equal to V common R. Therefore, R, we can move this bracket away from R and put it, over by VR and this is multiplying to become divide. So R is equal to VR divided by V minus 3 and we could also rewrite this to mean a little will make more sense by taking out R. So VR is equal to V minus 3. Okay so this was example 1. I hope you pause the video and make the necessary notes and we'll do our next example now. So now we're going to look at example two. An example two in this, I, I want to explain this as much as possible. So we're going to look at another example quickly. So example two will involve more factorizing, of course. So example two now looks like this. We want to transpose the formula. Capital D over common D is equal to the square root of f plus p over f minus p and we want to find for f. It's hard, it looks hard, eh? Right. So the first thing we want to do and the first thing I will do is rewrite this. So D, capital D over common D is equal to the square root of f plus p over f minus p and again we want to find for f. But it doesn't matter which one, but the easier, simpler one is obviously this one up here. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of that square root sign. And in order to get rid of that square root sign, we need to multiply or square both sides, right? So let's square. Let's square. So we will end up with, this will cancel out this. The square number will cancel out the square root. So we'll now look at d squared over common d squared is equal to f plus p all over f minus p. Good, that's our start. The next thing we want to do now is cross multiply both sides. We want to keep, we want to bring across f minus p here and we want to take this d and bring it up here. So now we will end up with d squared f minus p is equal to common d squared f plus p. Okay? 
So now it will look like this. And then we're going to expand the brackets. So we're going to have now d squared f minus d squared p is equal to d common d of course squared f plus common d squared p. And now we could factorize. We could factorize now by grouping terms that are like. So we want to put d, we keep in the df squared but we want to bring common df across. So we're going with d squared f negative or minus d squared f common d squared f and we'll end up with d squared d squared p add d common d squared p and then we factorize it. So we're going the common factor here is f and we'll end up with d squared minus d squared and the common factor here now is p so we'll end up with d squared plus d common d squared now we can move this across as far away as f as possible so f is equal to p open brackets d squared plus common d squared all over d squared minus d squared okay so hence now f is now the subject of the formula and this was a lot to take in because we had capital d common d we had to factorize twice but uh, i will reiterate so we was given the formula capital d over common d is equal to the square root of f plus p over f minus p and we want to find for f First thing we need to do is get rid of that square root sign and we do that by squaring both sides. So the square take out the square root. So we'll end up now with d squared over common d squared. So we just multiply everything by the power is equal to f plus p over f minus p. And now we can cross multiply. We're going to put a d common d over um, on the right side and we're going to put uh, expression f minus p over d to d squared when we end up with this now we will end up with this like brackets d squared open bracket f minus p is equal to common d squared in open bracket f plus p when we expand our brackets now we're going to get capital d capital d squared f minus capital d squared p is equal to common d squared f add common d squared p and d squared f we want to group like two. So when we reach at this point, we're going to do what is called the distributive law and we're going to group. Okay? So d squared f minus common d squared f is equal to capital D squared p and common d squared p. And when we factorize, we pull out the common term. So the common term here is f and the common term p. When we factorize, now we're able to take all this away from f and divide it onto the side with p here and we'll end up with f is equal to p open bracket capital d squared add common d squared close bracket all over d squared minus capital d squared minus d squared so we need to use a lot of operation here and it starts with distributive law okay so again I would, this was the last case, I would encourage you to pause the video and make notes and this will be mathematics for this week but before this week ends I want to do a zoom session to clear up case 7 in particular because I know some of you went to message and say we don't get it. So when we do that we could probably go over factorizing and take apart this one more time. So I hope you appreciate this video tutorial on transposing or making the subject of the formula or obtaining the subject of the formula and I hope you pause the video and take relevant notes for each case and I also hope that you understand each case so again keep replaying the video as much times as you wish in order to understand this and try to make a brave attempt at the exercise that I will be posting for you on the forum so thank you for watching this video tutorial on 
transposition.